Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Off the Shelf. Today we are going to be talking about holiday books. Um, I am recording this the day after Thanksgiving, so it is officially the holiday season. I know a lot of us have been reading Christmas books since July because it's just been that kind of a year. But if you haven't, or if you have and you need some new inspiration, I've got some books for you to take a look at today. We're actually going to start off with a Hanukkah collection. This is Eight Kisses. It is eight romance novellas um, or short stories here, all surrounding Hanukkah. And Hanukkah this year starts on December 10th. So if um, you're into romance, you're interested in Hanukkah, you, you, know, you celebrate Hanukkah, any of those things, this is definitely one to, to give a chance. Um, I haven't read it yet, but I, I'm interested too because I love these collections of the short romances. You get just the best little parts of a romance and you leave out all the extra stuff, which is what I want. So Eight Kisses definitely get you in the Hanukkah spirit. Next, we have Amazing Peace, a Christmas poem by Maya Angelou. This is the poem that she read at the National Christmas Tree Lighting in Washington, D.C. in 2005. So it's really, really short. You see it here. Let me fold back my little notes here. It's really skinny, and there's a few pages, or a few words, sorry, on every page. It's, it's very, very short, but... Um, I know we could all use a little bit more peace right now, so if that's something that um, interests you, definitely come and check this one out. Kind of along the same lines is The Christmas Box by Richard Paul Evans, and um, if you have read this book and you really like it, definitely check out what else he has written. Um, Richard Paul Evans has written a lot of Christmas books. He writes other things too, but he's written a lot of Christmas books. We have a lot of them in the collection. Um, so if you've read this one already, definitely check out those. If you haven't read this one, it is about the meaning of Christmas, basically. Um, a widow has a young family move in with her and together they, they discover um, about the first Christmas and really what the meaning of Christmas is. So certainly Christian religious overtones on this one, um, but if that's your jam, definitely check this out. We're gonna go a little historical next with Mr. Dickens and His Carol by Samantha Silva. Um, this one is a, a fictional take on uh, how Charles Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol. And so it, it covers the holiday season and Dickens has a case of writer's block and his publisher and editor are like, just, just write us a Christmas story, just write us a Christmas story. And that's much easier said than done. He didn't really want to write a Christmas story but his wife is like planning these lavish parties for all of their family and friends and all he can see is what it's gonna cost. So he needs to write this Christmas story and make some money to pay for the holiday season. Um, so if, if that sounds interesting to you, getting kind of behind the scenes on the, A Christmas Carol, then check out Mr. Dickens and his Carol. Then we have A Nantucket Christmas by Nancy Thayer. This is, um, well, first of all, I, I'd love to spend Christmas in Nantucket. That sounds lovely and quaint and just wonderful. Um, this is a story of a newly married woman. Um, she's new to Nantucket, and her stepdaughter is doing everything she can to kind of thwart the Christmas spirit that she's got. Um, the, the stepdaughter has like no time for Christmas. She doesn't care about any of this. She's not happy that her dad married this woman. And this woman's like, I'm not going to let anything stop me from having an amazing Christmas with my new husband in scenic Nantucket. So if that sounds great, 
A Nantucket Christmas by Nancy Thayer. She's another one that has several Christmas ones along with all of her other books. So if you're looking for more in this vein, definitely check out her other ones as well. And then we have Dashing Through the Snow from Debbie McComer, maybe? That's how I always say her name. I know that everyone says it differently. Um, somebody, if you know for sure how to say her last name, please let me know. Because every time I say it, I go, I'm not sure that's right. So anyway, Dashing Through the Snow is um, a story of a man and a woman who are both desperately trying to get to Seattle ahead of the holiday. And there are no more flights for them. Um, and their only option is to rent a car and drive there together. But they don't know each other. And I don't know about you, I know that that is the start of plenty of romantic stories, but I don't want to be in a car with a stranger for hours and hours and hours. That that sounds like like chance of a lifetime for a serial killer. I don't know. <laughs> I've listened to too many true crime podcasts. Um, this one is not about serial killers. This is a romance. So they they drive together to Seattle, and they find they have a lot in common, and sparks start to fly. So if that's something that sounds great, um, it's it's definitely. This says it's soon to be an original movie this holiday season. I believe this book is from last year. So. Um, if you like Hallmark movies, this is gonna be right up your alley. Next we have Christmas Bells. This is another last name that I have a hard time with. Jennifer Chiaverini? I don't know. She's very prolific though. Um, this book is one of those dual timeline situations um, you have a present day story which is um, in Boston a teacher is covering a local artist's work as part of a project that she's working on and she chooses Longfellow as the local artist that she's she's going to use and so then at the same time you get to read about Longfellow's Christmas season in 1863 when he wrote the words that she is using in her project. So you get to see both parts of um, the timeline, I guess, of what's going on there. And it's, it's based on his um, Christmas Bells poem that he wrote. He, that year was very, very tragic for him, and um, this is kind of covering all of that. So very heartfelt and a little bit of historical, and it, it sounds really good. I, I want to read this one. And then we have, gosh, I can't say anybody's last names today. Royal Holiday by Jasmine Guillory. <laughs> Jasmine Guillory is a romance writer. Um, she writes diverse romance, which is super important. So um, definitely, if you're into romance, give her a read just in general. But Royal Holiday is um, a, a more mature romance. The main character goes to London with her daughter because her daughter got a job um, styling a member of the royal family and so she tags along to spend the season in London with her and meets a man and they um, they fall for each other and if that sounds awesome then check it out um, I like that it's not you know all 23 24 year olds that 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 people a little bit older are given a chance to find love to, um, because very often romance novels are set around either people that are basically like early to mid 20s or um, still young people that have like 
lost a spouse tragically or something like that, but not often with um, people in their, you know, maybe 50s and 60s. And I think that that's, that's a hole that needs to be filled uh, in addition to not having all of the romances be white. Um, so this is an awesome addition to our romance collection and a fun holiday read. In a different direction, we have Hidden Sea by Gregory Maguire, which gives you a backstory for the Nutcracker. Um, if you've ever seen the ballet or any of the movies, uh, really, of the Nutcracker, then you have the basic story of um, the little girl being given a Nutcracker doll as a Christmas gift by a Godfather, I think usually he's a Godfather, Godfather Dresselmeyer, um, Dresselmeyer. So in this, you're actually going to Germany in the um, 1800s to get the backstory for all of that with Dresselmeyer and um, yeah, and Clara, his goddaughter. Um, it's a little bit more fantastical. Obviously, the Nutcracker is kind of fantastical anyway. He comes to life and fights giant mouse kings and things. Uh, so if you're looking for more of a fantasy holiday read, this one is definitely one to take a look at. We're going to shift now to mysteries with the usual Santas. This is another collection. So there are, I'm not sure how many stories there are in this one, um, but it's a collection of Christmas capers, um, all obviously surrounding the holiday season. There's one about mall Santas having to find the imposter in their ranks. There's um, more of a Sherlock Holmes story. So there's a lot of a fun holiday um, capers. That's a fun word, isn't it? Capers. Uh, so check this one out if you're looking for something along those lines. Similarly, we have Janet Ivanovich's Visions of Sugar Plums, and this is a novella that fits in with the Stephanie Plum series from Janet Ivanovich. I don't think you have to have read the other Stephanie Plum books in order to um, read this one. I think this is one that you would have enough understanding um, without starting like all the way back at One for the Money. I don't know what number we're up to now. It's like 28 or something of those books. So definitely don't feel like you have to read all of those if you want to read this one. This one's nice and short. So if you have read a bunch of those, this is a good one to, to supplement that. But either way, you don't have to. If you're unfamiliar, Stephanie Plum is um, a bounty hunter and she's always getting mixed up in stuff because, you know, I'm, that's, I guess that's the life of a bounty hunter. I don't know. I'm not a bounty hunter, so I have to assume that that's what that's like. Um, but basically, there's a man in her kitchen when she comes in, and things kind of devolve from there. So if you already like Stephanie Plum, you definitely need to read this one. If you are interested in learning a little bit about what Stephanie Plum and her stories are about, then maybe this might be a good one to, to take a look at. And then I've got one more for you today. It is The Seven Days of Us by Francesca Hornack. Hornack is what that says. I see it backwards in, in my camera here, and so sometimes I can read it fine and sometimes I can't. This one is about um, a family who are spending... Christmas together for the first time in a very long time, um, but not because they want to. They're not all thrilled to be together. One of the daughters has been treating an epidemic abroad, and when she returns home, she is forced to quarantine for a week, and um, her family is told that they must quarantine as well. So they are all quarantined together for a week over the holidays, and um, Obviously, if you're not wanting to spend a week 
with your family at your like crumbling country estate, then there's going to be some some drama going on. A bunch of people online are sort of comparing this book to the movie The Family Stone. So if you've seen that movie and you really enjoy it, this one would be a good read. You get some of that that holiday family drama that um, we might be missing out on a little bit this year because a lot of us are not seeing all of our family members the way that we might otherwise. So, Seven Days of Us. Um, check that one out too. That's all I have for you today. I hope that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving um, and that you're staying safe. And I will be back soon with some Christmas movies to recommend to you. If you're not already in the holiday spirit, I'm gonna do everything I can to help get you that way. So definitely check back with us soon for another video. If you're looking for personalized recommendation requests, definitely go to the website, eastmpl.org, fill out a personalized recommendation request form. Try saying that five times fast. Um, let us know some stuff that you like, kind of what you're looking for, and we will respond back with a list of things that we think you will enjoy. That's all I have for you today. Have a safe and happy holiday season, and I'll see you next time.